all right uh hello everybody uh good morning good afternoon or good evening depending on where you're joining us from this uh today uh my name is kazim adeguega and uh, today i'm going to be presenting uh, an azure topic uh, which is self-service option uh in azure ad so that's what i'm going to be walking you through uh today uh, so first of all my introduction uh, I work with Icon Systems Limited. Uh, I'm a LinkedIn instructor, so I also work with uh, the Ololox team uh, here in Nigeria. Uh, I'm a Microsoft Certified Trainer. I'm a Microsoft Azure MVP. Uh, I have a podcast on my own that I run, so it's uh, Tech Talk with Kazim. Uh, you can look that up on YouTube. And I also have another one that I run uh, with a good friend of mine, Samuel Eskin. And that you can also look up on YouTube at Africa Talks Tech. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter. Uh, my Twitter handle is Kazim Can Teach. So the agenda that we're going to be covering today uh, include what is self-service. So I'll be talking to you about what self-service is all about. Uh, we take a look at the available Azure ad self-service options that we have and uh, the rest will spend on the portal uh, looking through all the self-service option that we have up on azure ad and uh, we'll try to wrap up uh, so we've got 30 minutes to do this all right so what is self-service or what are self-service uh, self-service empower users to perform tasks themselves so it frees up the ad, the administrator or the service desk team from doing those uh, from performing those tasks so if you're an administrator that work with an organization you can try to be uh, a little more proactive by turning on some of these options so that um, uh, this kind of requests don't have to come to you when people need to do things such as password reset when people need to create uh, groups in SharePoint, or perhaps they want to create an Office 365 or security groups, those are tasks that users should be able to take on uh, themselves instead of trying to reach out to the administrator or trying to reach out to the service desk team uh, to help out with those kind of tasks. So that is what self-service uh, is about. So there are a number of capabilities, self-service capabilities that we have up on Azure. Uh, so the three of them I've listed uh, here. Uh, we have uh, the self-service group management. Uh, so for the self-service group management, it will allow you to define who is able to create groups, right? So do you want your users to uh, be able to create groups or do you want groups to be accessible to them in their uh, My Apps panel. So I'll show you what the My Apps panel looks like in just a little bit. So, so that uh, you have that option available up on Azure AD that you can tweak. There's also the self-service application access as well. Um, when you have your enterprise application, uh, you know, you can define what application gets published to your users from the Azure portal. So from the Azure portal, you also have this self-service option that you can turn on to either allow users uh, to be able to um, to be able to publish apps, to be able to define or you know define what apps they have access to, and so on. So here, as an administrator, you can also get proactive and lock down certain apps and uh, you know maybe you only want to allow a uh, certain groups of applications so you can do that or you want to just at the surface level allow all apps and uh, you can also get a little granular by locking down certain apps so you are also able to do that as well there is also an option for self-service password reset so that i mentioned earlier so if um your users forget their password or there's a need for them to reset their passwords 
uh, they, they don't need to reach out to the administrators to do that, except uh, that is how you've designed your environment, uh, you know, for them to always reach out to the service desk team. Uh, so even if they want to reset their password, but that option is there for you to also leverage right where users can reset their password themselves regardless of the device they're using so if you turn this on it means that users will also be able to reset their password even when they are using their mobile phone right so uh that's uh what we're going to be looking at today because the time that i have like i mentioned is 30 minutes so the rest of it i'll just walk you through them from the portal all right so here is my azure portal um so to log into the azure portal i don't want to assume here if you're new to azure the url is portal.azure.com uh, so once you log in with your credentials it brings you to this landing page here and uh, you can try to use this search box to look up the azure resource that you're trying to create or that you want to configure. So in my case, I have it right here. So I'm looking for Azure Active Directory. So I can click on it from here. I can look it up from the search bar or if it's a service that you've recently accessed. So it shows up under your recent services. So it, whichever one floats your boat. So I'll click on that. Good. So the, the first option that we mention is the option of groups, right? So if I click on groups, so that is we're able to do self-service group management. You want uh, to allow users be able to create their groups or you want users uh, when they create group to send a request to the administrator. So the administrator allow at the creation of those group for those users. So you do that from here. Again, click on Active Directory, uh, Azure Active Directory, and you click on Groups, it brings you here. So you can see on the settings, we have the General tab here. So under the General tab, uh, you have this option here of self-service group management. So you can see the default is for it to be turned off so it is no by default meaning owners can manage group membership requests in the access panel uh when we say access panel access panel this is what the access panel looks like by the way the way you access your access panel is via this url here myapps.microsoft.com so once you're here it gives you access to all the applications that you have. You can access your SharePoint, you get the picture. So if there's a need for you to create groups, you can create groups from here. So this is what the access panel uh, looks like. So if you want this option, owners can manage group membership requests, then you simply turn it to on. So the next option is to restrict user ability to access group features in the access panel right so you can uh restrict them access but the default here is also a uh, no so security groups can user create security group in azure or if they're using some kind of uh, you know api or they want to create uh, their groups via powershell so that is set to yes by default so if you want to take away that ability uh, you have uh, the option of doing that by setting it to no. You know, when it comes to creating groups, there are two groups types that we can create. Is either you're creating a security group, so you use security for permission related tasks, and we also have the Microsoft 365 groups. So if you're doing things like uh, you're setting up Exchange, you know, your mail, you have Exchange online. Uh, you're leveraging SharePoint online, so you might need to use a Microsoft 365 group to lock a few things down. So you have the ability to restrict your users from uh, creating those groups from here. 
another thing another option that you can set from here is the expiration option so if i click on expiration when a group is created you have that ability of setting the lifetime for that group that is after that period expires those users the users will need to be sent a request to renew uh you know they'll be sent a notification to renew their groups right so what if that is what you want to do then you have the privilege of setting the group lifetime so you have an option here of 180 days 365 days if this doesn't work for you you can customize it to your heart content right and um in the case where you have groups with no owners so you can also define who is going to be the default owner of such a group right so you can specify the email address uh you know of that user you can specify that here keep in mind that once you turn this on if the group expires it deletes the group if the group is not renewed that is it deletes the group and everything that is in the group is going to be lost so just keep that in mind and um there's also another option here for naming policy so naming policy we're able to do things such as block words right that is you're trying to give a naming convention to your groups you're trying to define what kind of naming convention do you want your users to use anytime they're creating groups in your azure environment right your office 365 environment so maybe you want to also block certain words there are certain words that they're not they're not allowed to use so you can download some here and uh, you know work with uh, so, so if you have uh, a customized file you can upload it here so automatically it's going to block uh, those words uh, another tab here is showing group naming policy so here is where you tidy up your group naming convention right so you can add a prefix you can add a suffix right that's what comes before the group name so if i want the group name to be uh department before the name or perhaps department underscore so i can have the prefix as uh department you, you get the picture right so if you also would like to add a, a suffix to this that's what comes after the name so you can also uh, add one uh, here so that is one option uh, that you have uh, when it comes to uh, when it comes to service self-service up on uh, the Azure AD is the ability to be able to do self-service group management another option that we have is self-service application access just like I showed you in the slide so if you want to come back to the self service application access you can go back to uh, the uh, active directory home page once again that's the azure active directory so if you're new uh, to the azure cloud or you're new to the cloud generally you might be wondering azure active directory is this the same as active directory that we know on prep well you, if you're new to this you can visualize it as sort of the same so even though they are not the same yes but you know that same concept holds true it does some of those things that you're used to doing on premises so what handles some of those responsibilities for you what handles those identities for you when you're working in the azure cloud is the azure active directory so um what i want to do again is the self-service application access so i said i'm going to come to click on your azure active directory one more time and uh, if you're trying to enable that self-service you will come to enterprise applications enterprise applications so it will give your users the ability to be able to browse your active your azure active directory gallery for applications uh, that they're able to use right so these are my applications right applications that we have in our enterprise uh so if i click on user settings here 
So you see, we're able to turn on and off some of this option. So users can add apps, gallery apps to my apps. So by default, it is no. So if you want users to have that flexibility of adding it themselves, looking up the Azure gallery for apps they can add, so you can choose to turn it on, right? Admin consent request. So when they request, you want admin and administrator to grant them access. So you get the picture so you can also turn that on uh, from here uh, as well. So uh, this is uh, one of the things uh, that you, you, you can do, right? And if you like, uh, you can say no to it here and then get a little granular that you go straight to the application that you want, right? And then choose to turn it on there. So you also have that flexibility. So that is another one. So you see, we're able to access all of the applications here. So if I say this application, there's this application that I'm working with, uh, it's called the Outspace VR, right? So under this application, I can come to self-service for this application and then say this application allow user to request access to this application. So if I want, I can say yes here. Or if I want, I can say no. So you see, at this level, let me come back one level. At this level, user settings, I'm defining things like users can add applications. So I can say yes, if I want, right? For users to be able to add application. And uh, if I want to get a little granular, I can come to all applications. Oh, sorry, I need to save this first, right? So once you make a change, save it first, come to all applications, and uh, from here, I can select the application of my choice. Uh, let's look at this Alt Space VR and uh, self service for this application. And I set it to no or I set it to yes. So you can use this to get a little granular, right? So that's how the dots connect between those two settings. Um, so let's go back. One other thing that we can do is self-service password reset, right? Self-service password reset. So we said with self-service password reset, it gives your user the ability to be able to um, reset passwords uh, themselves, right? So uh, they'll be able to reset their password uh, without having to forward that those password request queries to uh, the service desk or the help desk or the administrator as case may be right so this is how you uh, do this so you come to your azure ad uh, again and you can see password reset here so if i click on password reset I'm going to, you can see that password reset in my case is turned on for everybody. So everybody is able to reset their password. So you can also try to marry this to multi-factor uh, authentication. I mean, it's a no-brainer. You should have multi, some form of multi-factor authentication turned on anyways. So what you can do here is to turn on self-service password for everyone or to turn it off for everybody. So if your policy, your security policy detects that you set it off for everyone, so you can set it off. Or if you would like to set it on for just some selected group of users, so you can also do that as well, you know, from here. So you select uh, the group that you're looking at and, uh, you know, grant them uh, the access as appropriate. So, um, that is what I have for you today. Um, so, and uh, remember, I've told you, I told you about the apps panel, right? So the apps panel, how you assess the apps panel once again is via this URL. 
that you are seeing on the screen here myapps.microsoft.com is what would give you access to the apps panel so you're able to do a number of things from here you know you have access to still your application you know you see the the, the the waffle icon is still present here and all the available apps that is exposed to you uh, is also still uh, present here so so that brings us uh, to uh, the end of this demo so coming back to my slide So what we've looked at is what self-service uh, is all about uh, when it comes to um, Microsoft Azure, right? When it comes to Microsoft Azure AD, and we looked at the available self-service options. And I walked you through how to turn on those different options up on the Azure portal. So uh, thank you very much once again. Uh, so if you'd like to connect with me again, so you can do that uh, on Twitter, it's Kazim Can Teach uh, on Twitter. So if you'd like to follow me uh, up on LinkedIn, it's Kazim Adebuega on LinkedIn. And uh, my email uh, is a.kazim at iconsystems.com. So uh, if you have any questions for me, you can forward it via any of those mediums. Thank you very much. And I'll see you next time.